all welcome to let's tute if you haven't subscribed to our channel then do subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update from us do check out our website www.letstute.com for wide range of courses on math and science hello friends today we are going to play a game and all you have to do is just say the color in which the word has been written and not read the word so are you ready let's begin Was this confusing? Was your brain put to test? I know it was. So today let's learn about this important organ of our body, the brain. So while playing that game were you accidentally reading the word and not speaking out the color? Don't worry, it's normal. It's called the left-right conflict of the brain. Your right side of the brain tries to say the color and your left side of the brain insists on reading the word. So by this we know that the brain is divided into two halves, the right half and the left half. And both these halves are connected to each other by a bundle of nerve fibers called the corpus callosum. So from this view does our brain remind you of anything that can be eaten? Any nut? Yes, it looks like a walnut. And did you know that a walnut is a brain boosting nut which when eaten regularly helps to increase memory power of the brain. So like you can see here our brain has wrinkles on its exterior surface and this wrinkly part is called as the cerebrum which makes up the major portion of our brain. But not every individual has equal amount of wrinkles. These wrinkles indirectly determine the intelligence of an individual. You may be wondering how So let me tell you the logic is that the wrinkles are formed to increase the surface area of brain tissue so more the surface area more the number of neurons in the nervous tissue and more the neurons more intelligent an individual is so now we know that cerebrum is associated with the intelligence of an individual now let's look at the brain from a different view So when we change the angle and when we see it from this side we notice that the cerebrum is actually divided into four parts or four lobes we can say and each lobe has different functions that they perform for the body The first one is called the frontal lobe Now just by the name can you guess which one of these can be called the frontal lobe Yes it is this one the one present in the front Now to tell you its function let me give you a math problem Can you calculate the sum? Did you get the right answer? The frontal lobe controls problem solving and intellectual activities. So right now to solve this problem, your frontal lobe was actively involved. Some other functions are that this frontal lobe controls attention, judgment, behavior and muscle movement. So now let's test our muscle movement. Are you ready? So on my command quickly raise your right hand good so your frontal lobe is functioning really well let's move to the next lobe this highlighted lobe here is called the parietal lobe and do you know what it controls wait let's take a test to see if it functions well so you have to do as i say pinch yourself as hard as possible come on do it quickly did that hurt did you sense any pain so well your parietal lobe senses pain It also helps in visual functions such as reading and understanding statements. Are you all having fun learning about the lobes in the cerebrum? So let's continue. The next lobe is called the temporal lobe. It controls the visual and auditory memories. So all that you see and hear gets stored in the form of memories in this lobe. Do you all want to test this lobe too? Okay, so all that you have to do is listen to the statement Memorize it well and repeat it later. Are you ready? Here we go. Jack will cycle to the market and bring tomatoes for his mother. Did you get it right? You're brilliant. Let's move ahead. 
The fourth and the last lobe is the occipital lobe. It helps in recognition of color, words and movements. So let's take a small test for this. So in this moving video here, you have to find the 10 hidden words and you have 10 seconds. Let's start. Wow, so quickly we've completed learning about the cerebral lobes along with their functions. Let's move to the second part of the brain. The small bulge at the back of your brain that you see is called as the cerebellum. Just like the cerebrum, this cerebellum is also divided into two halves. It's called as the small brain and it is a very important part of our brain. Compared to the cerebrum, the cerebellum has more number of neurons and it controls essential body functions like balance, coordination and posture allowing us to move properly and maintain our structure. So your cerebellum is the reason that you can stand on one leg, jump around, run and maintain your body posture and structure. Now both these parts that we just discussed are superficially present on the exterior of our brain. But tell me one thing, who tells you when you are hurt or angry or sad or excited about something? We link these emotions to our heart, but is it really your heart? No, it's your brain. The part that handles your emotional side is hidden below this wrinkly portion or the cerebrum. So in our next video, we'll dissect our brain and try to reach the depth of it, where we'll be studying two more important parts of our brain which lie in the interiors. So, that's it for this session. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Till then, keep watching, keep learning.